Okay, it's Soppy again from Soppy and Marco Dish Out on the Movies. Movies. And I'm TV going... TV shows, too. We want to talk about another movie right now. It's called Stepfather, just it's, so you know. Well, it's Stepfather 1, which means there might be some more. This one was made in 1987. It starred Terry O'Quinn. Shelly Hack and Jill Sholm. Jill Sholin. Jill Sholin. Stop it. All right. The makers of this horror movie didn't waste any time revealing the main character. He isn't some monster with tentacles, claws, or teeth, but a human being named Jerry Blake, who may even be a serial killer. The opening scene reveals Jerry washing his hands in a bloody sink, shaving off his beard and cutting his hair. After showing his nude backside in the shower, he finishes up the transformation from a <laughs> woodsman-like person from a beard, long hair, and spectacle man wearing a flannel shirt and casual pants to a clean-shaven, nicely-dressed gentleman with a haircut. As he prepares to leave, Jerry spots a toy on the floor and carefully places it in the open toy box, neatly tucking in the rest of the toys and carefully shutting the lid. I mention this detail because to reveal the irony of him walking down the stairs, because I wanted to reveal the irony of him walking down the stairs where blood is dripping down the walls in the background. In the rooms below lie the carnage of his murdered wife and two stepdaughters. In fact, there's so much blood, it looks like he massacred an army and not just three people. Jerry grabs a small bag and happily leaves the house as if it's just another day. Well, it looks like he had a lot of fun with them after he killed them. I guess so. Probably did all sorts of things with him since he loves knives. The next scene shows him on a ferry, which turns out to be the transition point between crime scenes where he leaves one life behind and enters a new one with new victims and a new job. The story raises questions which reveal little or no answers. What is his backstory? How many people has he killed so far? And has he ever married a woman and had any children of his own? If I drew the story in terms of a graph, I would make three separate by, but identical hills and valleys. Each hill is a murder scene or a potential murder, and valleys represent the fairy scenes, which are transition points in his life. Later on, I'll tell you what I think of it or how I review what I gave it in terms of rating it. Now Marco wants to talk about it. Movie's awesome. It's pure awesomeness. It's so awesome. I I can't even. I can't even. It's so awesome. <laughs> uh, let's let's start off at the beginning. Okay, they they don't they don't they don't dick around. They give you three people brutally murdered just all over the place, and he just walks out of there like, oh, I don't give a f. And then he gets on the ferry and, you know, the look on his face. He is such a fantastic actor. And I, I wish he was in more Stepfathers besides that weird second one where he was able to do this character more because it's probably one of the best horror characters ever. Even better than, I would say, Jason Voorhees and... Ghostface from Scream or Leatherface. I mean, this guy, he means business. And uh, literally and figuratively because it shows he can go to any job and he can get it. Like near the end when he went to that uh, insurance company and he's like, oh, I've sold all types of insurance and I can do any of it. And the guy's like, okay, you're hired. Because he is so persuasive and, yeah. He's nice looking. He has nice clothes. And he's impeccably dressed. 
and he has an honest look about him. But if you really get to know him, there's a coldness about him too. But of course, when you're interviewing, like the way they showed it in the movie, they would probably hire Jack the Ripper and not know who they were hiring. Didn't you find that a little odd how he was just able to be like, oh, I can do anything here. And the guy's like, okay, you're hired. I think it's because he just exuded a certain confidence and honesty, even though it was fake. In other words, he was a good actor in the story of being somebody who would be a good person. Actually, at his job... He did do a good. He did do a good work. Yeah. Because. Cause in the story, the the people he, the the next family they show him living with, they do talk a lot about his job. He's a realtor. I don't think there's anything wrong with giving that away. Which and, really, that that gave to a lot of some entertaining moments, especially how he could have this house that's abandoned and he could go in there and do anything he wanted in there. Well, I don't know if he did anything. Well, I can't, I, you know, we can't, we're not going to give any more of the story away. But just how he's able to access an abandoned house all for himself. and. Well, it's a house that he shows to people, though, too, yeah. right? Yeah, and then he... It's a he, house for sale. He sees the family that he sold the house to near the end. I thought that was cool. And and the main girl is great. And a lot better than Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween, by the way. And... I don't know about that. Well, you're just... You're, you're a little slow on this movie. Since I've been... I've been watching this movie every year around Halloween time. It, and you watch it every year. You're going to have a good time around Halloween. Admittedly, I have only seen this movie once. Ooh. And that was just a few days ago. And my son, of course, Marco, has, has said it, that he's seen it many times. So, I've seen Halloween... He brought this up with Jamie Lee Curtis many, many times because it's like something you do every Halloween time you watch that movie. So I have seen that one. And like I said before, he has seen a lot more movies than me. But he told me about this and we wanted to review it for you. And I was glad to see it. I thought it was really good. The guy, is Terry O'Quinn, is really good. I mean, he... He's older now, but they wanted to do another serial killer movie like the one where well, they're going to make it, I guess, with Leonardo DiCaprio. H.H. Holmes. H.H. Holmes movie. And that, he reminds me of H.H. H. Holmes. He does. He would be, He would have been perfect H.H. H. Holmes. Well, that's basically the, the movie is his story, like a little bit like, the, the broad details of him uh, having multiple wives and killing families and everything. Yeah, that's the problem, though. We don't, we are left really with a lot of questions about Very short his movie. past. Too and, short. And it is a short movie. And unlike Basket Case, which we've just reviewed, it doesn't have much of a backstory about how he grew up and how he got to be the way he is. He has a anger within him and he's able to keep it hidden. And it only comes out a little bit and then it's kind of related to this um, murderous intent that he, he gets in the movie. And, but it's, not, it's something you ought to see we enjoyed it. Obviously, Marco enjoys it because he's seen it a lot more than I have. And I've seen it once, but I'll next year I'll watch it again. So, are you ready to give it a um, one review? Thing, one thing that I like about this movie, too, is you're talking about you doubt that she's better than Jamie Lee Curtis. The thing that I think 
makes her better than Jamie Lee Curtis is that in Halloween, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is rated or labeled a scream queen, quote unquote. Well, she in this movie does not scream hardly at all. I, I think like once or twice. And she's very calm and uh, just a lot a lot better of an actor than Jamie Lee Curtis was in that movie. To be truthful. Yeah, but um, you don't know how much the director told her to scream all the time. I mean, that's the way they used to make women anyway. They're supposed to be screamy and limpy and let a man do everything for them and I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis was like that in that movie, though. I no, thought she, she was a strong person. She was strong, but I just... The way that she just kept screaming so much, it, it was so distracting at some points. And there's a, a huge tip is that you want your audience to scream more than the person on the screen is screaming. Like, you don't want the people on screen telling you how to feel. And... The, the girl on Stepfather does a very good job of letting the audience feel what they want to feel. And I also love how this movie does not have very much violence. It, when it does have violence, it goes over the top and makes up for the lack of violence, and I love that. And I would also say an idea for the future. Number one, you could do a crossover with Chucky. So <laughs> Chucky versus Stepfather. Stepfather's gonna be like, no, I just want a family, I just want to have a family. And Chucky would be like, screw your family, mother effer! <laughs> It'd just be really funny. And I'd love to see that, of course, not the new Chucky, the, the old school Chucky. Or I think this would also be a really good twist, is that if he finds the perfect family, and he's, he's living a perfect life. But instead of his family ticking him off, it's the job that he's at that's ticking him off. So he, he doesn't have a perfect life anymore, so he has to kill the people at work or something like that. I think that would be really interesting, like yeah. a twist. I don't know. We've seen that too many, too many times in real life. It would be a twist. Yeah. Instead of the family making him mad, it would be the job. Maybe. But. And have Chucky. I don't know. <laughs> As you can see, Marco loves crossover ideas. I'm not really one for crossover ideas at all, but. Only for horror things. I don't really like usual crossovers. Like, if you were to say Miracle on 34th Street crosses over with jingle all the way well I no 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 thank you no way so are you ready to review it yeah <clears throat> rate I mean, it rate it okay well i give this movie three hamburger sliders you know little tiny hamburgers one has lots of ketchup representing the first murder scene which is weird but why not the second slider has everything on it it represents the second family. I won't say anything else about that. Ooh. And the third slider is just a plain burger, which represents a single parent he meets, but with whom he never gets to marry. And what do you, what do you rate it? I I have to give this. I'm I'm gonna say it very precisely and very descriptively. You have this special. Plate. It's, it's a plate you only bring out once a year for Thanksgiving. And then you put three skinny slices of turkey. And the turkey has been perfectly cooked and, uh, you know, salted, whatever. And then you have a small lump of perfectly cooked mashed potatoes with perfect gravy. No pepper in this gravy, like with the deli gravy, you know, McAllister's Deli, they do this pepper gravy. None of that. Just regular gravy. And then, to top that off, 
a little bundle of freshly cut green beans in June. It has to be the month of June because that's when green beans are most at the store. And so that's what I would give it because this movie is very short, but what it gives you is perfect. It's perfect for what it is. It's a horror movie. It's not uh, an Oscar bait movie. It's a horror movie. So. Okay, well. Tell us what you think in the comments. If, if you hated my idea, tell me. And I'll come at you. <laughs> Alright. I'll send Chucky after you and <laughs> I'll write a crossover about Chucky killing stupid YouTube commenters. <laughs> Marco, that's stupid. I'm just kidding. It would be kind of funny to see Chucky uh, go with like a teenager to school. And <laughs> I don't know. I, I love Chucky. Chucky's awesome. He's, I mean, just imagining him with the stepfather brings up a lot of drama because the two characters they're both evil one of them you know Chucky he's very upfront about being evil he doesn't but he also hides too he he hides directly in front of people and so does the stepfather so I really love to see that so goodbye okay, okay bye for now see you later